Welcome back to Iran Travel Guide. We are here in Persepolis, the city of Akmenian, the capital city of Akmenian, and I am very excited. This is going to be a very different experience. You cannot find something like this anywhere in the world. I'm just looking for Stu. I don't know where he's, he is. You want to come and join me or not? Coming, coming. Okay. <laughs> very good. Hello, hello. Welcome back. As, uh, as he was saying, let's, uh, let's go have a look at the main monuments in the main area here. We've been yeah, to the sure. gate, but uh, there's a lot still to see. So let's go. Come with yeah, us. Yeah, come with us. Where have you gone? What? Where did you go? <laughs> I'm waiting for you. I didn't realize you were shooting. So we're coming to the main area here. We're expecting to we are expecting to meet Mr. Mr. Ghasemi yes. today. We ask him to come and join us and help us catch up with him here to give us some information. So what do you think? What do you it's think? I, mean, I haven't asked you. No, no, no. It's <laughs> what do you think? It's really good. I mean, like it's not only so old as we know and we can see and so impressive. Even though there are a lot of walls missing and so on, you can really get the sense of what sort of place this was. Yeah, you know, it's and uh, that time. And yes. Yeah, for that time in this place, sitting with these mountains behind here, the rocky hills. A real sort of center of power and, and authority. And it's clear that there were kings living here. You know, this wasn't just an old city. This was for, for the highest in the land. Exactly. And, uh, no, it's very, very impressive. So I can see Mr. Rasimi there. There he is. Hello. So, and to come and Hello. come and join us. Hello again. How are Thanks you? Thanks for coming. <laughs> Thank coming you. Back. You're welcome. So, so you ready? Yes. Let's go. Can you tell us more about this yes. uh, this main area, these columns here? There's several really impressive ones. هر کدوم از قسمت هایی که شما اینجا میبینید یک کاخ جداگانه است و هر کاخ رو یک پادشاه اضافه کرده به مجموعه تخت جمشید تمامی محبت تخت جمشید So what you see as the whole idea of the city here it's not something which is built at one time at one spot basically each king who came to the power has added something to this place and made it very special. So like each one of these has been built by maybe different kings yeah. or different in different times. generations, yeah. So that's the reason that there are like different places in this city mm. have different, different styles, styles, different, different uh, stones, different periods, everything. Yeah, you can really yeah, see your it. Your forest is becoming good. You don't need me to translate for you. <laughs> So we're standing here in the central part of Persepolis and we're sort of having a look around and seeing the different parts of the city here and there's these beautiful columns here, some of which, some of which are standing, some of which you can tell where they were. But this was the oldest part of the city if I'm right. What was it used for? این قسمت اولین جایی بوده که در تخت جمشید ساخته شده جایی که داریوش این جا رو بنا کرد بیشتر مراسم سلامی که در کنار اینجا So yeah this was the main part and the part which was built the first in the city of Persepolis which was built by Darius and this was the place that all the people from the each and different corners of the emperor the Persian emperor which was a huge emperor in that time from like India or Libya or in Africa would come here to show their respects to show their greeting to the king they would come here and gather in this place so this place this area the central area was, has been built for this reason this is basically the center of the Persian Empire as it stood for many years it is true yes years. so the reason that this place has been made uh, built by Darius like basically he wanted to show his power he wanted to show that this is the Persian Empire yeah. and how powerful I am so you should follow me you should listen to me you should take order from me you can and see that from the, uh, from the buildings I mean it was a huge empire as we know and it had a huge edifice huge building at the center of it to, to reflect that Uh, 
این رو باید توجه داشته باشین که تمام افرادی که می اومدن اینجا و به پادشاه سلام میکردن هر سال یک بار باید می اومدن یعنی این یک روند سالیانه دائمی بوده که اتفاق می افتاده و سرکردگان So basically each year like each of these governors from different areas in the Persia Empire had at least had to come here to this place once a year mm -hmm. to show their respect okay. and to show that we are still under your protection we are still mm -hmm. also following your rules to show their obedience yes exactly <coughs> and I am becoming your translator basically so maybe you can like hire a translator for yourself <laughs> Okay, should we should we move on? Go on. Yeah, let's yeah. Let's have a look further on. Lots more things to see. And welcome back to Iran Travel Guide. We are here today with you from the city of Mashhad in the northeast of Iran. This city is one of the most important tourism center in Iran. Of course, mainly because of the presence of the shrine of Imam Reza, who is the eighth Imam of Shia in this city. But also, there are other reasons for bringing over than 29 million tourists yearly to this place. Yes, people come here for the historical sites, the gardens, the religious pilgrims as well, and for various other reasons, including more modern facilities, such as shopping malls, water parks, fairgrounds, and even a city beach. And of course, these tourists who come here are not of, uh, only from Iran. There are lots of domestic tourists and lots of tourists coming from Arab countries. Some Western countries also come here too. Yes, Western tourism is really increasing here. We've met a few Western tourists on our trip. But people come here and what's great is that because of the shrine, because of the number of people coming here, the hotel industry and the accommodation industry has really boomed around there. It's sprung up in so many places and there are a real range of hotels to suit all budgets. There are more than hundreds of hotels for different budgets in this city. Where we're standing right now, as you can see, is one of the luxury hotels, five-star hotels in the city of Mashhad. But there are other hotels available, depends on your budget. Uh, the reason we brought you here to just uh, show you some of these places, some of the accommodation available in this city. Yes, from uh, the sort of things you'd expect from a five-star hotel, they re everything's really provided for here. There's no lack of services, whether that's from drivers to laundry to, to internet access to various other things. Everything you'd expect from any hotel in the world, you'll be able to find here. And of course, for some, some, some couples like us, maybe this is not what you really want. If you're not looking for something very expensive, there are more hotels available here for low budgets, accommodation, suites, or even like normal people giving their houses to rent. Yes, exactly. It's, it's possible to stay in all sorts of different environments, depending on what you like. Whether you want to get more of a taste of the real culture, you want to live in luxury, or you just want to have a good time or for a low budget. What is very important for tourism, as I exper experienced it myself, is the safety and a good accommodation. 
I really want to ask him, as because he's been here for a while now, and as a tourist, he's been traveling around the country. What do you think about the accommodation, How, like the variety of accommodation? Well, it's been really interesting because we've had such a variety of different accommodations ourselves, both in Iran and on our own travels outside that. And what's great is that there is this variety here. There are things from cabins, lodges, small homestays, staying with friends, staying with other people. But there's also that mid-range thing of, of hotels, guest houses, apartments you can rent. And at the same time, there are the more luxury hotels like the one we're in now. And of course, because the tourism industry is growing and developing in Iran, so the, two, the hotels and the accommodation places are getting better and better. Like in Mashhad, they're really get good, doing a great job, really doing a great job. Yes, the money that's come into the city from the shrine directly and indirectly has really gone into creating an ambience here which is very conducive for tourists. There's no sort of lack of facilities here from, from restaurants outside, from every, every sort of facility you'd want can be found in the city, which means a trip to Mashhad is not just fly in, go see the shrine and fly out again, but actually is a whole experience with lots of different facets to it. Whatever you want to experience in a modern city, Mashhad is there. You have it, all the modern places, modern halls and shopping malls, everything you can find in this place. So we're going to have a look around this hotel here. Stay with us as we take you around. We're going to sort of soak up the atmosphere, enjoy our time here and show you some of what the high-end luxury accommodation of Mashhad is really like. Be with us. not my favorite <laughs> but they're beautiful you know it's like Iranian silver and gold are very good I think they, they all are silver with like uh, the different ones that look like you know, different designs it's like a Ganesh there as well yeah yeah, yeah. Interesting. Some of the animals and the, the craftsmanship is really good let's go inside and have a look yeah I think the stones are, must be like very special or something they look very different mm. very nice let's go in I want to check the stones, what the stones are. Hello. Hi. Thank you. Very interesting. Yeah, very nice. They all are in silver? Yes, all the work is silver. Mm -hmm. right. And what, um, what stones are famous here? What gems? Like these oh, ones? The, uh, the f uh, actually, in Iran, uh, there are uh, a lot of stones that mm -hmm. famous. Sure. Some things like uh, Abit. And uh -huh. another one likes the feroz. Can we they see one of the Arif yes, from okay. close? Of course. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, the Arif one is very famous, uh -huh. very famous. In different, colors, yeah. 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 in different colors, yeah. Uh -huh. In different colors. And on this stone is written by hand. Ah, I see. Mm -hmm. And someone written uh, Nasrum and Allah. Uh -huh. It's uh, uh, like an Arabian uh -huh. language. Sure. It's like it's a religious. Is yeah, it yeah, yeah. It's very common in Iran. Mm -hmm. They carve like mm. holy words on their rings or the necklaces yeah. just as a protection. Mm -hmm. no, this is very beautiful. Maybe you want to yes, have a look yes, from yes. close. No, we've seen this sort of work on other things like you know okay. the calligraphy and in, on yeah. very small objects as well. It's, it's amazing. In the what other well. stones are very yeah, famous? Another stone is famous uh, like Firuza Nesha. Uh -huh. yes. mm -hmm. It's very, very famous. Yeah, yeah this yeah. one is very famous, Firuza. Is, uh, thank you very much. You see, it's like a very special blue. Mm -hmm. We can show it to the it's camera. Like a, these veins on it as well. Yeah, this one is very favored by Iranian, this stone. Mm -hmm. The English name is Triquis. Turquoise, turquoise, yeah, yeah. Turquoise. Oh, it's very beautiful. 
Yeah. You see the like the mm -hmm. the, the lines, the yeah, they're yes. like natural like mm -hmm. that. No, of course, yeah. Very very nice. Look at that. It's like a bracelet. Mm -hmm. Also, like a dragon. Ones. Oh no, it's a snake. It's a cobra. Mm -hmm. Oh, this one here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah very nice. So um, we're here in this beautiful garden at the back of the complex here. There's a couple of swimming pools around and you can see there's a yeah. restaurant and children's playground. It's all very nice and peaceful and quiet here. Yeah, exactly. As you mentioned, it's very nice and place for fun, recreation mm -hmm. for all Armenian families and members and also tourists. Why not? Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's very always. nice. I mean, how does the Armenian community fit in as part of the Tehran, part of Iran? How, how is the relationship? Uh, you know, Armenian community has a long history in Iran, mm -hmm. maybe more than 400 years, four centuries, really? centuries of history in the background. And the, during all these centuries, uh, the Armenians have always been very respected mm -hmm. and very yes, beloved population and community in this country. They've kept their own culture very strong, but at the same time fit in very course, well. Of course, of yeah. course, comparing to the other countries, I can sure. say that Armenians here, uh, they could well preserve mm. their identity, yeah. The culture and uh, the way they, their style of living. Uh, we have our own schools, right. our own churches, yeah. our own ceremonies, our own centers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, we are free in our practices. Mm -hmm. So during these all years, uh, we have had, uh, we we could have uh, preserve our uh, cultural identity mm -hmm. and national identity sure. very sure. well. So the Armenian church, I mean, we saw the chapel earlier, but the Armenian church here is, is free to do what it wants. It's, it's not restricted in any way. Of course, yes, yeah. of course. We, are, we, are, we have always been free and mm -hmm. we are also free uh, to do our practices and religious practices here. And it's not, I think, only about Christians because, you know, Iran, we have Muslims, we have Christians, we have Zoroastrian, we have Jews, we have different religions. Yeah. And I think these all people could like find a respect point and live together very well. Uh, one of the more, more important uh, thing that I have, I have to mention that I think unlike the other countries, uh, here Armenians uh, have their political representat representative. Yes, they do. We yeah, have in, two the MPs in the parliament. Yeah. You know, yes. uh, Armenians have two uh, member of the parliament mm -hmm. in the parliament. So we have our voices and we have direct connection to the government sure, yeah. and the political circles in this country. Mm, very good. Yes, that's great. Yeah. So, <coughs> How do you choose this? Like, is it the, through elections? The yes, same as the normal procedure as the other uh, sure. member of the parliament of the country. During that uh, election period, mm -hmm. we also choose our uh, MPs. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. You want to have a diving? Well, yeah, you can have fun. <laughs> Not right now. Uh, that's a big one. That's a very big one. Wow, what is this? This is a uh, <laughs> This is a football the court, yeah. Dynamic point. Yes. <laughs> the center of this stadium, mm -hmm. the football field. Uh, you know, the Armenians have a long history uh, in the football of Iran. Mm. Uh, Arad has had. You want to have a sit? Yeah, have a sit, please. Uh, I'm just going Yeah. Arad has fine. had a football team in the national level mm -hmm. and uh, so very famous sort of <coughs> players, famous players football players yeah, a yeah. very good football team Ararat mm. football team was very famous yes it was yes. very famous and like they uh, had lots of players in the national team they had a lot of na uh, players mm. in national team it used to be very popular and yeah. now it's popular also sure uh, and uh, but now uh, some uh, because of some 
uh, restrictions. I mean, the, about the uh, players. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have only uh, players in young generation. Okay. Yeah. We do not. We do not have adult football. I mean, famous players. But the football players were, who were famous and very professional mm -hmm. in the past. Now they are here. They do cooperate mm -hmm. with the uh, new generation. They teach them. They are their sure. coaches. And I shall I shall name some of them. For example, yeah. uh, I mean, all the Iranians know them. Edmond Bezik. Oh, he was my favorite player. Mm -hmm. Edmond Bezik was, was very favorite. prestigious football player yes, in uh, Armenians yeah. Yeah. and also in Iranians. And uh, we have also uh, Edmond Bakht Akhtar. Yeah. And uh, the one that we have, uh, Andranik Taymurian. Mm -hmm. Both him and his brother has played. Uh, Ando is still playing for the national team and mm -hmm. his brother was a football player as well. Oh, very yeah, good, the so. Armenian uh, football club and Armenian football players, mm. they uh, did always cooperate in the national level in the Great, country yeah. and they had their share mm. in the football of the country. Very good. See what they have to sell. It's like a charity shop. Hello, nice. hello. <laughs> Thank you very much. Wow. Can I help you? Yeah. Um, so just, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the the handicraft and the shop? Th this and, uh, is the handicrafts that Armenian ladies make, and oh, wow. we sell them for charity. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! It's so beautiful. Yeah. Uh, show us is it to the yes. camera. Have a look. Yeah. <laughs> oh, very nice. Very beautiful. So these are for charities. Mm -hmm. The younger gen generation they mm, make it. Very okay. nice. Very so nice. The kitchen. Kitchen. Uh -huh. This is all made during all made by here by the ladies. Uh -huh. Yes. And, and then we have some sweets. Uh, all the mm -hmm. kids come from sure. their uh, trainings mm -hmm. there. Did you like it? No, it was very interesting, very good. It's lovely to be so welcome and such a good guide and you know, to find somewhere so different in Tehran, somewhere so special and different and quiet. I oh. loved it, I really loved it and it seems that you liked it. It was different for you too. Yeah, right? yeah, it, it was, was different, it was, it was new. Place, yeah. And I hope you also enjoyed. Mm -hmm. And also I'm waiting for you guys to be with us for the next shows and everything and everywhere we're gonna go. Yes, Please. Tune, in, tune in next time and see where we are then. Yeah. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you.